Hello, welcome back to another Hallian 6 Deep Dive. And the preset that we're looking at today is this one, Osmium. Drag it into the slot, let's hear it. So we've got a sequence based kind of thing going on. And we can see that it's based on uh, a wavetable zone. So without further ado, let's uh, let's start having a look from the top. We usually have quick control assignments and note expression assignments, and we've already seen in a couple of these preset um, deep dives that this is how we tie into the macro. So this is a, a another macro that we've not yet come across. Anima is the the main way that you interact with wavetables through macros, and you can see that we've got quick controls assigned and all sorts of things going on. One thing that it did occur to me, having done a couple of these um, deep dives already, is that I'm not really actually just using the quick controls in their own right. Because I don't care for macros very much, I kind of try to pretend that they're not really there, but that's unfair. Because what you, what you do actually get is some really cool really easy out of the box effects so I am being a little disrespectful to, to macros by not at least letting them flex their muscles I thought that was good. When I saw sync notes, I thought, ew, that's going to send all sorts of things going wrong. Because we're now out of time on each ear. Rather than me fiddle around, try to get back to the, uh, the default setting, let's just reload it and start deconstructing. So let's talk about um, widths of notes in the flex phraser for a moment. First thing to note, see this seven here? It's not actually having any effect. There isn't a note mapped there. So that's no effect at all. In fact, if I make this note bigger, you see it just kind of paused and then went over the note. That note that I just overwrote is gone. See the, the, the lights get turned off underneath and when I shrink the note back to its original length they are gone. If I then bring them back they'll come back at the widths they were before they were deleted so Hallian remembers how wide each of its steps is and by default if you bring that step back it'll maintain the same width. So we've got the same same sequence again. The, this is the only um, non-octave based note. Uh, we have a, a fifth here, perfect fifth. So these are transpose increments rather than explicit notes. Doesn't matter what note you play on the keyboard. This note here is always gonna be 12 semitones higher and this is gonna be 19 semitones higher. So if you just basically do a, like a, a uh, a modulus 12 in other words throw all your collections of 12s away what are you left with you're left with seven and seven semitones above the root is the perfect fifth and everything else your 12s and your 24s and your noughts are just octave bounces let's see what happens if we play with the gate scale a bit We're really pinching each of the notes only a tiny bit of it's getting through. And now it's expanding. A 
this sequence is in chord mode which means no matter how many notes we play they'll all play um, simultaneously it won't arpeggiate them and note also that uh, this sequence by default as loaded is using variation 2 Variation 1 does actually have a sequence and now the 7's interesting, the 7's are actually being played. So you know all those times when I say have a look at that if you see something in, in a preset somewhere that doesn't make any sense or if something's muted and you don't understand why don't immediately discount it. It was really easy to think, oh, that seven's just not having anything to do with anything, throw it away. Well, it's been used in variation one, so a little bit of investigation. And why is it variation two? Why are we looking at variation two? What else? What's what's in one? Ah, a new sequence. Now then, the zone. Wavetable. Got a whole host of stuff. Let's have a look at all this. Mute everything except oscillator one. fully panned and if we listen to oscillator 2 fully panned same wave go over and have a look in your wavetable this is oscillator 1 8 waves that's what they look like and these have been drawn they're not extracted from a sample oscillator 2 same waves Why are we using different oscillators to output sound to uh, our left and right um, ears <laughs> if they're the same thing? Well, the answer lies in the values in the zone itself. The easiest way to find out what's different between two oscillators is to just do this. And your eyes immediately guide you to what's different. We've got fine tune control. We've got pan, we know about pan. And we've got a little bit of variation in the random position as well and what you actually end up with is a much thicker sound so hold that in mind now I'll mute one one of them set the pan to center now by rights this should be more or less the same sound it's much thinner Mute those two, sub, let's have a look what's going on with the sub. We've got a uh, saw wave, doing what saw waves do. And the noise generator, violet noise, you gotta love it, haven't you? Add them all together. Fabulous. Little bit of tube drive filter, just giving a bit of dirt, a bit of grit, a tiny bit of distortion uh, on the on the tube drive. So let's hear the effect that that's having. So that's more of it. If something is so subtle that you can't hear it, make it more. Find where it is. And then once you've focused on it, bring it back down and you should still actually be able to notice it. Some of that is psychological. You need to be careful with things like confirmation bias that you don't like teach yourself to hear things that might not be there. Just gonna go back to the bass sound just in case we've fiddled with too many things that we've colored it too much. And carry on from here. Got a continuous controller 110 mapping here to the filter cutoff. I don't believe it's actually programmed anywhere, but obviously you can gen generate MIDI control messages um, to control your cutoff from here. We have modulation wheel. So, the mod wheel is assigned to the sustain level and it's a negative modulation so I've got my wheel turned all the way up here at the moment you can see down in the bottom left hand corner and when 
I turn the module, the module down, the notes get longer. So we're attenuating the sustain level when we increase the modulation wheel. We're also dramatically diminishing the decay time. So we're basically making it much more staccato. Get there quicker, get out of the way quicker as well. And you can hear that effect. And then we're also applying negative modulation to the filter cutoff. Dollar. Okay, let's have a look at the user envelope. We've seen that this was a flat line, so it's not having any effect in its own right. It's just a, a delivery mechanism for the wavetable noise level uh, mod matrix curve to be applied. The best thing to do is take all of the other sounds out so that we're just hearing noise. and then take that away. So now we're not applying any modulation at all, which means the noise generator's natural level um, is determining how loud the noise is gonna be, and the noise generator's actual level is zero. So it's the mod matrix that's allowing us to actually hear any sound without any modulation being applied. We don't get anything. I press a key, we get absolutely nothing. When I bring the curve in, we go from nothing up to 50% noise. If I bring this to 100%, it's gonna get louder. If I make the modulation 100% all the time, it's louder all the time. We've now no longer got the velocity slope. It's just playing the noise at 100%. So that is exactly the same as muting the mod matrix. Now we go back to zero, no sound. Go over to our uh, zone, make the level 100%, same sound. So if you ever see a value in the mod matrix that's dealing with levels, make sure you go back to the native source and find out what its start point is because that's the point from which on our modulation matrix graph we're starting from what the control is actually set to and then we're applying uh, a modulation effect over the top get back to our basic sound again and then it looks like that's it for the mod matrix you actually fooled there's a load of blanks and we've got some values down here this is primarily for your um, for your macro stuff so this is where we map all of those macro controls to their corresponding values. So if we have a look at like um, note expression seven, wavetable two direction, maps into Hallian's wavetable two direction. And then when we look at the top level sound, note expression seven, wavetable two direction, there it is. So this is getting from the knob in anima, oscillator two, direction, and we're mapping that across to edit, zone, wavetable, oscillator two, uh, direction. So there it is 100%, make it 63, go to the macro, 63. Graphic EQ, pretty basic stuff. Just because it's basic, doesn't mean it's not doing anything. It is accentuating the bass and the treble. You can hear it, you can close your eyes and tell if it's on or off. So even though you might think, oh, it's only an EQ, this is how the, the subtle effects of all the tone quality is actually achieved. Chorus. Doubling effect again. You need to be careful with chorus not to turn it into some kind of munchkin kind of sound, but at subtle levels, it 
it's a just the, the most wonderful effect. We have a multi delay, it's stereo, and we've got a 0 0.99 offset on the left and right. So we're going to get a little bit of bounce. And I was having a little bit of, of a play with this earlier, and I think bring it down a little bit more, and you get something really sweet. I can hear it kind of bouncing across. If you bring it in too much, things go wrong. Now there will be other settings on that scale as you go down that you do start to cross over kind of um, attractively. But around 95, 96, I'm, I'm thinking is, is more of a sweet spot, sweet spot than the 99 they have set. If you set it to 100, it's really noticeable. Yeah, I much prefer it offset, that's great. Feedback is like really obvious. on for longer. Low and high frequencies merely attenuate the delayed signal. When you're listening to it, don't forget that these values don't do anything with the original iteration of each note. It's the delayed sounds that you that are attenuated. All those all those delayed sounds are now tinging more. pulls them down, pulls the, the upper frequencies away from the delayed sounds. In order to hear the reverb, it's probably easier to turn your other effects off. Always the best way to hear a reverb is just to play a single note. Mute it. It's really there. It's nice. So this is an early reflection setting. So we've got a hole, and the um, the early reflections and tail uh, are set at fifty percent. So if we want to just hear early reflection stuff, which is the first few milliseconds of the reverb sound, it's it's got a different colour. It hasn't yet had an opportunity to fully explore the sound. hasn't had an opportunity to fully explore the room. You know, bouncing around all the world, the walls. So you're just hearing those initial first uh, few milliseconds, and you get. A really clinical there's no reverb to speak of now we're starting to bring reverb in and over on the other side you get the expansive nature of the hall and that's the sound we start with these simple sounds and it seems like there's not going to be much there one zone and a few effects and yet there's just constantly interesting things to discover and new approaches that the sound designers who have designed these presets uh, have taken to get to, to interesting results. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you hit subscribe and click notifications, you'll find out when the next one comes out. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.